If you're enjoying these videos, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on data analysis with Rust Notebooks. It's a practical book that teaches you the concepts and how they're implemented in practice. All the code examples are written in Rust with Rust Notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates when new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description or by going directly to store.shahinrastami.com. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter for updates. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to get up and running with the Rust programming language and Jupyter Notebooks. We'll break it down into six parts. One, installing Miniconda. Two, creating our environment. Three, installing packages and extensions. Four, installing Rust. Five, installing the Avixa Jupyter kernel. And six, running a quick test. There's many different ways to get up and running with an environment that will facilitate our work. One approach I can recommend is to install and use Miniconda. Miniconda is a free and minimal installer for the Conda package management system. I'm going to visit the Miniconda download page and copy the link relevant to my installer. I'm going to download this from my terminal and then execute it once I've given it the relevant permissions. From here, we'll just respond to the prompts and let it do its thing. Now we're ready to go with Conda. Let's use Conda to create our environment. I'm calling mine Darn after my book, Data Analysis with Rust Notebooks. When it's ready to go, we'll need to activate the environment like so. From here, we're going to want to install our packages and extensions. Here are the ones we'll need moving forward. First, JupyterLab. I recommend version 114 for compatibility with the extensions we're going to be using. We'll also need CMake, Node.js, the JupyterLab Plotly extension, and optionally, if you like the look of it, my JupyterLab theme named Purple Please. Now to install Rust. I'm going to follow the instructions on rustup.rs, which just means pasting something into the terminal to download and execute the installer. We'll need to respond to any prompts. For me, it's just selecting option one to proceed with the installation. With Rust installed, we can get a Vixer running with just two steps. First, using Cargo to install a Vixer Jupyter, and then running a Vixer Jupyter with the install flag. All done. Now let's give it a test. I'll have to run JupyterLab from the terminal, making sure to be in the darn environment. Once it's loaded, you can see that we have the option now to create a Rust notebook. Let's quickly switch to the purple please theme before creating our first notebook. From here, we're just going to run a few bits of Rust code. We'll do the usual hello world printouts. Let's do the same again, but this time using a variable across different cells. And then let's add a few things together just to see the output. That's it for now. Personally, I'm enjoying using Rust through Jupyter Notebooks. I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to comment below to suggest any ideas for future videos. I could, for example, do a similar video, but for setting things up in Windows. If you're enjoying these videos, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on data analysis with Rust Notebooks. It's a practical book that teaches you the concepts and how they're implemented in practice. All the code examples are written in Rust with Rust Notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates when new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description or by going directly to store.shahinrastami.com. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter for updates.